Hello everybody, it's Shisha here from Shisha.info again. Today we're gonna talk about Salesforce development. Every now and then I've been running into a situation that I need to create a large amount of custom object, custom fields, you know, like hundreds of them. So in those situations, one way to do that is manually create them from the UI, right? You go there, you click the button step by step, you can create the object, create the fields. But it's a tedious work. It takes hours to create those hundreds, and it's a uh, human errors there. It's the typers. So I was considering to automate this process and help everybody, you know, who needs to do this in the uh, near future. So then I did some Google, and I found uh, people are discussing this in Stack Overflow as well. For example, this thread, somebody is asking, can we use DX to create, uh, you know, these custom object fields? And the answer actually isn't so good. The DX does not uh, support it yet. Let's say the official DX does not support that. So people has alternative uh, solution. They use the Python, you know, to manipulate the data and create the XML skeleton. So it's doable, but it's not so native. No, uh, it's not so intuitive. Then I did a bit more study. Then I realized there's a really good uh, plugin created by Sean. Actually, I have already connected him uh, in Twitter. So this is a great plugin, and it does a lot of. Uh, extra commands that the official DX does not support. So I will put the link of this repo down below in this video so you can go there to check what's the latest commands from Sean's uh, SFDX plugin. You know there's a lot of things here so we're not going to the details but in this video what do I really needed is the object create and the object field. These two commands is used to help me to automate the custom object and fields creation. So what did I do is I did some proof of concept testing. I created the repo. I already put it in the GitHub. I will also put down the link below in the video so that uh, you might want to play around it and understand how it was done. And in future, you can use it as well. So basically, I under the hood, it uses the Shans uh, plugin. And then what it really does is it uh, read the data from the CSV file. Okay, the CSV should contain those metadata for the object and fields you want to create. And then you just run the DX uh, Sean's DX uh, plugin and create those object and fields one after another. So I, I just want to quickly do a demo here to to show you guys. It's better than you know read all this readme step. But the README already kind of really good uh, step by step instructions. You can go there after the video if you uh, found it useful. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump back to the Visual Studio, which has this repo I created. Um, as we can see, it contains a CSV uh, data folder, which contains the CSV file. One is for the objects, one is for the fields. So they contain the related metadata, like the label for the object, the program name, you know, all this uh, information should have been filled in when we create uh, the object from the UI, right? All these things are mandatory. So we put them in the CSV. So these things should come from the business requirements, right? And then we have the fields which have similar, similar column of the data. So we just prepare them somehow and here as a sample case we have two objects and two fields and what i really created is a node.js uh, uh, sample solution it read through the uh, csv file it pass the data then it run a uh, create field uh, data towards each uh, row in the csv file and then what does it really do uh, is to run a command in the local environment. So you run the DX Shans plugin and then supply all those uh, metadata information from the CSV and then uh, hopefully you will get the success result or the error result. So that's basically what it does it do. Now what I want to demo is that I will uh, switch back to the terminal and then I'll just run mm, a note. Uh, create uh, object. So let's say we create the object first because the field, some of the fields will have dependencies on the object. So otherwise it will fail, right?
Alright, since it has run successfully without any error or message, and if we go back to the false API, we can... What? We didn't have that? Uh, what is this? How possible? Error? Ah, default object. Default. Ah, oh, I need to refresh. Oh, I was so worried. I didn't know what has happened. Yeah, but uh, stupid me. I need to refresh, and then I got the two objects here, right? So they contain the, the information that they really wanted. So, and also there's no fields, right? We only created the, the objects, which is good. And then we can also run the command um, to create a field, right? So it will then run the uh, program again and create the related fields, you know. For in this case, it's just two fields related to the game. So actually one next step is uh, important. Uh, we are doing the things in the DX format. Uh, it's not compatible with the traditional org. When you have created all this, probably you want to push it into you know, tradi traditional dev environment, uh, UAT environment, or even to production environment. So what we really need to do is to you know, run the convert. So hopefully you already understand it most of the DX command, what does it do? So here, you know, it um, um, traverse the whole solution in this uh, project and then package all this um, metadata that we created the, under the project to uh, metadata API compatible uh, package. And now I have already put the things under the MD API, API folder. And the next step for me to do actually is just to do the deploy. So deploy. And there are multiple parameters. So this is not the DX uh, introduction session. So I assume you understand uh, most of these commands. So what it, it does here is there's a traditional dev environment. It's not the scratch org. So uh, we use the MD API command to you know deploy it uh, to that the traditional dev environment. So it tells me success. So it means the object and field has been created. So I would say. I can open this um, dev environment. We can go to the UI and check if the object and fields are really there. Opt oops. Objects. And it's called the game. Yeah, we have the game. And uh, what's the, the other one? I don't even remember what's the other one, the, what the other, a season, right? A game contains multiple seasons. Season, yes, we have the season, and uh, we had the game. Uh, come on. So the game contains also these two extra um, fields that I created. One is called uh, release date which is data object, data type, let's say, another is description, which has 255 bits of text. So all these are uh, done successfully in the environment. And uh, we also can, as I already did, is to save them into the uh, Git repository. Then in future, you can push it to whatever environment. So this is the, basically the demo about uh, the things that uh, Sean's plugin can do. So it, I think he did a wonderful job. And there's a lot of you know extra commands you can use, so definitely go to check his plugin. And uh, that's the end of the session. Hopefully, you find it interesting. Don't forget to go to the description, you know, play around with the uh, Sean's plugin and the my repo if you will, and then you know just learn Salesforce step by step. Okay, that's it. See you guys. Bye bye.